Hello, Matrix, and welcome to today's great 12 Physical Sciences show, proudly brought to you by Macmillan. Today, we have a special revision lesson on physics. We are looking at physics section, as I've said here, and we're looking at circuit calculations as well as uh, diffraction patterns. From there, we may also have time to look at momentum, but I'm not so sure if we'll have time to look at some uh, questions here that we have based on projectile motion. But quickly, let's just uh, have a look at this question here. Our first question for the day is from a prelim paper from KwaZulu-Natal. Okay, so those of you who are from down there, you should know that we have taken your paper today and we are actually talking to it to, you, to, to, to the whole nation about it today. Now, it says here in the second diagram below, all right, L1 has a resistance of 3.8 ohms and L2 has a resistance of 2 ohms and L3 has a resistance of 3 ohms, okay? The switches S1 and S2, now let's just have a look at that. The switches S1 and S2, just pardon us for the typing there that is uh, actually merging and getting together, getting on the way here. Those two switches are now open, all right? And the reading on the voltmeter is 12 volts. Now, if you are told that all the switches are open and you have got 12 volts, immediately you must know that this is actually the EMF of your battery. Okay, good. Now, the connecting wires and the ammeter have negligible resistance. All right. The battery has an internal resistance, small r. Okay, as you can see on the uh, drawing down here, there is the small r. We're talking about the internal resistance. Okay, now let's just go through these questions, all of them, before we attempt answering them. We'd have a chance to look at that when only S1, switch 1, is closed, with S2 still remaining open, the reading on the voltmeter becomes 9.5 volts, and that tells you immediately here that we're going to talk about lost volts as well, because we started with an EMF of 12 volts. Now we are told when that switch, S1, is closed, we are down to 9.5 volts. A, calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, now I, I need to give you tips here as well to say once the question tells you calculate the total resistance, it means you need to check on your diagram, your circuit diagram, whether you've got a parallel section and a series section. So you'll need to start with the parallel section, finding the equivalent resistance of the parallel section, and then you add it to the resistance uh, of, the, uh, of the series connection so that you now have answer the question that says find the total resistance of the, uh, uh, of the circuit. Okay, now, B, calculate the internal resistance R of the battery. For you to get the internal resistance, if you know what the lost volt is and you also know what the total current is, you can quickly get there. So that's one way of knowing immediately what to do when you are faced with a question like this. Of course, we're going to do it, so you're going to see it right now. Now, switch S2 is now closed, also closed now, and all light bulbs continue to burn. Will the brightness of L1 increase decrease or remain the same, okay? Use an appropriate equation or relationship to explain your answer. So we're going to look at that as well. Now, moving on, this is the question one, all right? Let's now start with the first question. The first question that says, when only switch one is closed, whilst 
switch two is still open, the reading on the voltmeter is that, and then we are to calculate the internal, I mean the total resistance of the circuit. Okay. Now, let's have a look at that. We were told that this L1, okay, the resistor or resistance of L1 is what? L1 is 3.8 ohms. Okay, and then L2, let me write here, L2 is 2 ohms. Then L3 is what? L3 is 3 ohms. Okay, so that's what we have here. And we are told that, or the question wants us to find the total resistance. Now you would see that L1 is in series to the circuit. So that is a series connection. Now L2 and L3 are the parallel connection. Okay? So for us to get the total resistance, we need to match the two. How do we do that? Let's just, let me just show you now. Okay, now let's start with the parallel connection. Like I said, RP, 1 over RP should be equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now I only have two resistors that are in parallel, so I would have it in that way. Okay, now their values, L2, which is R2 here, will be 2 ohm, L3 will be 3 ohm. In fact, I can easily say that this is my R2 and my R3 because my R1 will be for the L1, light number one. Okay, so I would continue here and say, all right, this is one over. R2 is 2 ohms, R3 is 3 ohms. Can then work this one out quickly. All right, we can then work this one out quickly. How do we do that? The LCM here is 6. 2 to 6 is two, 3 times. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus 3 to 6 is 2 times. 2 times 1 is 2. All right. So what do we have at the end? 1 over RP is it's, 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 it's 3. Sorry about that. Okay. So 1 over RP is 5. That is 3 plus 2, 5 over 6. Therefore, your RP over 1 is 6 over 5. And that gives you what? That gives you 1. I mean, 5 to 6, it goes once. Remainder 1. 5 to 10, it's 2 times. So now you know that the equivalent resistance for the parallel connection is 1.2 ohms. But I have been answered the question at this point. The question wants me to get the total resistance. Now, total resistance R, okay, total resistance R, T, would be equal to the series connection, which is given to me here. What is the, 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 the value for the series connection? I have this resistor here for L1, which is 3.8 ohms. Okay, so that will be 3.8 ohms plus the 1.2 ohms. And what do I get here? This is 4, 5. So I've got 5 ohms as my total resistance for this uh, circuit here that we, we, we're looking at now. So that is how you would answer this question here. That's how you would answer this question. Now, moving on to the next part of the same question, which is question number B. It says, calculate the internal resistance R of the circuit. Now, how do I do that? Okay. Now, to do that, I will need to get I will need to get the total current in the circuit. And how do I do that? Because I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, uh, 
potential difference I've got the 9.5 volts remember that is given to me when switch one is closed I also have the total resistance of the circuit and from that I can calculate the current first okay so I can say okay total current in the circuit will be given by V over R okay and what is V V is 9.5 volts divided by total R is what we have just calculated now and we found it to be to be five. And what is this here? All right, now five to nine, it will go once and just use a calculator quickly without wasting time here. So we've got, we've got um, <coughs> 9.5 divided by five. All right, and what do we get there? That is 1.9 ohms okay so that is 1.9 ohms i mean 1.9 amps or amperes sorry about that that is the unit of measurement for current and once i've got this i can use a quick way of finding my internal resistance because i now have the current i've calculated it i found it to be 1.9 amperes so if i have that I know I can get V lost from the information that has been given to me, and I know that that V lost will be given by total current times internal resistance. I can't get that. Now, how do I get the, 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 the V lost? You would remember in the question, we were told that, we were told here, we were told at the beginning here, we were told that when S1 is closed, I've got 9.5 volts uh, as a reading on my voltmeter here, but the battery is given to me as having an EMF of 12 volts. So that difference, the difference between 12 volts and 9.5 will give me my lost volts, okay? So I can therefore say, can therefore come to the point where we are here, and say, all right, this will therefore mean that my V lost will be 12 volts minus 9.5, okay? This should be equal to 1.9 times internal resistance. Now, what is 12.5? I mean, what is 12 minus 9.5? That gives us, we look at it, uh, that gives us 2.5. So the lost volt is 2.5, equal to 1.9 internal resistance. So my internal resistance in this case will be given by 2.5 divided by 1.9. And what do I get? You can quickly make use of your calculator again here. We just bring it on. So you've got 2.5, 2.5. Divided by 1.9. Okay, divided by 1.9. And what do we get there? We're getting it to be 1.32. Okay, 1.32 ohms. That's what we're getting there. 1.32 ohms. Okay, so 1.32 ohms is the internal resistance of the battery. Okay, so let's move on. Right. Now, the next one, still on question number one. Let's have a look at this one, number C here. Number C here says, when only switch one is closed, while switch two remains constant, that is the readings we're getting, okay? Now, switch S2 is closed, and all the light bulbs continue to burn. Will the brightness of L1 increase, decreases, or remain the same? use an appropriate equation or relationship to explain your answer. And I'm just going to stick to the relationship that will be quicker for you to understand and see. All right, now let's just uh, look at this here. Go back to the circuit. If you look at this circuit here, what the question is saying is that if the switch here is now closed, remember this one was closed long time ago. Now, both the switches are now closed and all these bulbs continue 
to have some light, okay, to burn. What will the effect of closing S2 have on the brightness of light bulb number one? Okay, now if you look at this, you would see that the ammeter is connected in parallel. Okay, it's part of the parallel connection here. This connection here, use a different color for it, this connection here. Now, because of that, this little resistance of the, let me use a very small R to just explain that. That minimum resistance of the, of the ammeter, which is negligible, I mean, given what, where we started from, you would see that it would have an effect. Let's move on. And I was still on page, I mean, on question number C here, and we are uh, trying to explain what happens here, because you are told that switch S2, okay, switch S2 has been closed now and all the three bulbs continue to burn. So L1, L2, and L3 are continuing to burn. Now, what will that effect have on the brightness of L1? That is what the question is. And I was saying to you that if you look at this here, the ammeter is connected in parallel with this section here of the, of the, of the circuit. Now, if it is in parallel there, it tells you that for you to get the total, I mean, the, the, the parallel uh, resistance here, the total parallel resistance here, you would need to include the resistance of the ammeter. And what happens is that because the resistance of the ammeter is so small, okay, let me write, it, write down what I'm saying here, okay? The resistance of the re ammeter is so small. Resistance of the ammeter is very small, okay? That's why usually you are told this resistance of the ammeter is negligible, so it's very small. Now, in a parallel connection, if you put all the parallel uh, uh, connection resistances together, when you work it out, at the end, the resistance of the parallel section will is always smaller than the smallest resistor there. So the RP, when you calculate, it's always smaller than the smallest, smaller than the smallest resistance in that uh, uh, section there, the smallest resistance. Okay, so if this is what it, it, it is all about, it means that the total resistance there becomes smaller, therefore making the total resistance of the circuit even smaller. So let's just uh, say something about that here. We would therefore say that because the RP has become very smaller than the smallest resistance, then the total, oh, all right, sorry about that. Then it would mean that the the total resistance of the circuit, total resistance of the circuit becomes effectively small, okay? Effectively small, and by this I mean it is going to affect the total current of the circuit, okay? So total resistance become effectively small, okay? Therefore, the current, remember, therefore, therefore, oh, therefore the total current, in fact, I should be writing total current there, therefore the total current I of the circuit increases, okay? And how do we know it's going to increase due to the fact that we know that the total current is given by I equals V over R. And remember that V is not changing. What has changed effectively is R. And therefore, if you make the denominator smaller here, you are making this value here bigger. And therefore, total current going 